This is the Alfa Romeo Tonale Plug-in Hybrid Q4 Raffelloce, a car to take the Italian brand into the era of electromobility. So, how's that going? Let's find out. The Alfa Romeo Tonale debuted in 2022 with front-wheel drive and a 1.5-liter petrol engine, 130 or 160 horsepower, both with a mild hybrid generating additional 20 horsepower, and a 1.6-liter diesel with 130 horsepower. In the pipeline was a 280 horsepower plug-in hybrid with all-wheel drive, which would bring more excitement to the range, and here it is. The Tonale is built on the same chassis as, among others, the Dodge Hornet, a slightly different front end, but the resemblance can be seen a mile away, and the Jeep Compass, here at least it's hard to spot similarities. This is nothing extraordinary, Stellantis has 14 automotive brands under its wings, so sharing components between models is inevitable. The question is whether each of the brands can maintain its uniqueness despite part sharing. Alfa Romeo is known for its emotional design and enthusiast-oriented driving characteristics. I know it's a cliché, but Alfisti seem to like them. As far as design is concerned, everything is top-notch, as expected. The Alfa Romeo Tonale looks like a scaled-down Stelvio, and I don't recall anyone complaining about Stelvio being ugly. There are the traditional Alfa cues, like the Scudetto grille, the headlight pattern is a reference to the Alfa SZ, then there are those beautiful rims with a design that is referred to as telephone dial, you know, back in the day when people had to dial numbers by turning a wheel. Alfa Romeo claims that the sideline is a reference to the GT model. In my opinion, it's a bit of a stretch, especially when we know about the Dodge Hornet, but let it be. I like how the snake, which appears in the Alfa logo, here incorporates a plug because, you know, it's a plug-in hybrid. The headlight pattern is repeated on the rear lamps, and there is a dual exhaust, purely a styling exercise as there is only one muffler and it's fed by a single pipe from the engine. You can see part of the exhaust from the side as it goes around the traction battery and I don't like it. But I suppose it was a packaging choice, ugly pipe versus practical interior. More about the interior in a moment and now let's start with the enthusiast-oriented driving characteristics. The Alfa Romeo Tonale is a premium crossover, but due to the brand's traditions, one that's probably a bit more sporty. Even if the base engine options are not exactly exciting. Anyway, it's good the front-wheel drive versions are underpowered because they like to understeer. What does the Tonale compete against? For example, the BMW X1, which can be had in posh or sporty spice flavor, and there are two PHEV options to choose from. Even the 225 horsepower one offers performance similar to the Tonale PHEV. The Mercedes-Benz GLB also comes with a plug-in hybrid powertrain. It can be ordered as a seven-seater. I deliberately chose the GLB because the GLA is too small for this comparison. 
also small but with similar on paper performance is the Mini Countryman SE All 4. When I say performance here, I mean acceleration, not necessarily range in electric mode. And something from the Stellantis group, no, not the Jeep Compass 4XE, the Opel Grandland, formerly Grandland X. The car used to be available in all-wheel drive with 300 horsepower. This version is gone from the configurator and we're left with a front-wheel drive PHEV producing 224 horsepower. I don't rule out that Stellantis may have decided to castrate the Grandland as it would make the 280 horsepower Tonale Q4 look bad. Alfa Romeo promises 0 to 100 km per hour time of 6.2 seconds and an electric range of up to 82 km in the city or up to 69 km in the combined cycle. In sport mode, I manage 6.27 seconds. As for range, I usually get, well, uh, somewhere in the 50s on a single charge, with about 30% driving using the internal combustion engine and 70% on electricity, I got 4.5 liters per 100 kilometers. Electric driving also includes shutting off the engine in regular hybrid mode when the main traction battery is depleted. I'm reviewing this car in mid-summer so the engine doesn't have to warm up and the batteries are not affected by low temperature. In autumn and winter, the results will probably be worse. It is possible to sort of force the Tonale PHEV to drive in electric mode only by putting it into A or advanced efficiency mode. But even then, when you step hard on the accelerator, the petrol engine kicks in almost instantly. In dynamic mode, on the other hand, the internal combustion engine does not shut off. And what about ride and handling? The Alfa Romeo Tonale has very direct steering with 13.6 to 1 ratio, and that's a plus. The downside is that the power steering is calibrated for city driving, so there's no feeling to it. Since Alfa Romeo anticipates that the Tonale will mainly putter along in city traffic jams, they could have skipped the huge paddle shifters. They're so big that they impede access to the indicator and wiper stocks. Also, you may not notice, for example, that there is a button on the indicator stock to turn off the lane keeping assist. Why would you turn it off? Well, funny you should ask. The lane keep assist is calibrated hmm, probably for wide and straight American roads. I got a similar impression in the Fiat 500e. On winding roads where there's potential for alpha enthusiasts to drive in a way that's not necessarily responsible for the environment and responsible in general, the lane keeping assist, even in its least aggressive setting, is powerful enough to spoil the driving pleasure. The pleasure of dynamic driving is not improved by the all-wheel drive. As I mentioned earlier, the front-wheel drive Tonale tends to understeer when pushed harder. In theory, all-wheel drive could offset this. It could if it didn't behave like a rear torsion beam in the Peugeot 306, where the car would suddenly tighten the turn in mid-corner. It's similar here. There's a hint of understeer and then the electric motor that drives the rear axle wakes up and corrects your trajectory, but sometimes too much and too late. The way around it uh, is to drive even more aggressively. And this is uh, where the gear shift paddles come in handy because then the rear motor is constantly running at high revs and there's no delay. The suspension is on the stiff side, but not unbearable. On public roads, I don't feel a significant difference between the suspension setting in normal mode and dynamic mode. With that said, regardless of the dynamic mode, the suspension can be switched to normal mode, just like in a Ferrari. Visibility is a nightmare. At intersections, pedestrians disappear behind the eight pillars for far too long. I'm sure Alpha engineers planned it all differently, but for some reason, this is what came out of the factory like those seats, which seem to have no lateral support that one would expect from a 280 horsepower car. For what it's worth, the all-wheel drive system does quite well in conditions for which the Tonale has not been designed. On my diagonal approach test, despite a ground clearance of just 156 millimeters, the Tonale handles well in normal mode, dynamic mode,
as well as in dynamic mode with ESP off. Aside from poor lateral support, the seats are comfortable. There is electric adjustment with memory function, that's of course an option, and so is the leather upholstery. The interior seems elegant, solid, and it's logically laid out. There is a virtual instrument cluster, but I like that one of the display modes looks like the classic 1960s analog dials. Additional data can be displayed in the middle and on the tachometer as needed and at the bottom of the speedometer is just a lane assist icon but when you turn off lane assist you get this snake with a plug or whatever snakes do. In the middle of the dashboard is a large display with a fairly easy to use infotainment system. Android Auto sometimes works wirelessly but even wired there are times when the system loses connection for a split second. Lower down are air conditioning vents and buttons to control the climate control. Even lower is the DNA system switch and a wireless charger, but the cubby is too small to comfortably put in a larger phone. Where's the start button? Uh, it's on the steering wheel. I guess it's supposed to make the car feel more sporty and special. Meanwhile, for a week now, I've been pressing the button on the DNA knob first and I'm always surprised the car doesn't start. I have the same problem with the air vent adjustment tips here. For a week I've been twisting one of them, uh, hoping that it controls the volume. Meanwhile the volume control toggle is behind the gear lever here. When the car is in drive, you can't see it from the driver's seat. And I know I can use the buttons on the steering wheel, I'm complaining because it's an Italian car, blah blah. No, it's just crap. The cup holders have rubber inserts, which means they hold even thinner bottles and cans storage under the armrest is so deep that my water bottle fits in it. The glove box is also fairly large by today's standards. The door pockets are big as well. Rear legroom and headroom are average. I'm 175 centimeters tall and the driver's seat is set to my driving position. Of course the middle seat is for someone rather slim. It's better to use it as an armrest with some cup holders. Behind it is a ski hatch which opens towards the boot, making it quite useless, I think. Anyway, uh, there are air vents, two USB ports, uh, Isofix anchor points on the two external seats, and uh, there is a door pocket where my water bottle fits. Oh, and by the way, the doors cover the sills. The boot. In the front-wheel drive Tonale, it has 500 liters capacity. In the plug-in hybrid, it is down to 385 liters, which is about as much as in a Volkswagen Golf. There are shopping bag hooks and a 12-volt outlet. There are also tabs to hold the floor open. There is a storage compartment under the floor to accommodate the charging cable. If I had to complain about something, the floor could fold halfway Deeper under it there is no space and to lift it you have to pull out all the luggage. And so you could lift half of it and push smaller luggage in deeper. It's a small annoyance but I expect premium brand designers to deal with such things. The boot lid is electrically operated. There is also a button to lock the car. The Alfa Romeo Tonale prices start at €36,800 for the 130 horsepower front wheel drive, petrol and diesel, super trim. The plug-in hybrid starts at €52,500 for the TI trim. This is top-of-the-line Feloce trim starting at €55,000. With extras, this test car costs €63,000. For comparison, I configured a BMW X1 xDrive 25e with similar equipment and it costs about the same. The Alfa Romeo Tonale plug-in hybrid Q4 Feloce is a beautiful car. The interior is pleasant and practical, especially for a plug-in hybrid. However, enthusiasts will be disappointed with how it drives. It's a shame, because with some steering feel and improved all-wheel drive software, this could be a gem. For now, it's a car that stands out in the streets because few people will buy it.
And what do you think about the Alfa Romeo Tonale? Could you live with an underpowered front-wheel drive version for the looks, or do you want the power and handling of an all-wheel drive? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like my sarcastic, down-to-earth and possibly mildly amusing car reviews, join me every Friday at 3 p.m. Central European time and don't forget to subscribe and like this video as it helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.